We are indeed. Oh, yeah, it's just popped up on oh. my screen. So good evening, everybody, and welcome to How to Cut It um, Master. We are platform and we are here with the incredible Samantha Blues. And guess what? We're going to talk about grey coverage. I know, very exciting. So do you have issues with your grey coverage? There are a few things that you need to know that Samantha Blues is going to help us with and we are going to get some incredible top tips. Yes. Would you like to earn regular money? It's great having all the different colours and balayage, but regular, your bread and butter every week possibly is your clients that need their grey coverage. Those little white shiny things that they don't want to, they don't want to see. Well, we've got a really insightful evening for you tonight, so I'm going to hand you over to Samantha Blues. If you have any questions, just put them in the chat box and I will be able to read them out and we can ask during this recording. So forgive me, guys, because once I go into this presentation, I'm not going to be able to see anything apart from the presentation. So whatever I'm doing and whatever you can see, God bless. Right, keep your fingers crossed for me. So... I come out here. I'm going to go into share screen. Allow share screen. And then back up. Yeah, yeah, looking good. Right, here we go. So we can see you and I can yeah. see me. You just can't see us. I just can't see you. Brilliant. All good. We can we can see your screen. That is looking awesome. So tonight, what I wanted to do was give us a little bit more of an insight on what we need to know about grey hair. And you'll be quite surprised. Everybody talks about grey, but there's actually no grey in the hair. There's salt and pepper. We've got white and we've got our own natural colour. So our white hair is, there's only really pigmented and non-pigmented. So your non-pigmented is your white. Whereas your pigmented, it turns out to be like your brown, your red, and your blonde. Um, so when you have them both mixed together, I tend to call it like a salt and pepper. I don't know what you call it, but it's when you've got your white coming together with your natural and you get that salt and pepper kind of idea. Um, so your pigmented and your non-pigmented is mixing together. So when you have a look at, where are we? This one here. There's black and there's white, and then there's a grayscale, right? So that is kind of a difficult to understand because everybody looks at brown hair, red hair, copper hair, um, beige, mauve, whatever you want to call your blondes. But to start with, when you're looking at the grayscale, you have white, you have black, and every, everything in between is on that grayscale, okay? So I want you to do it with hair samples here. And if you have a look at the bottom one to start with, because on the bottom one, if you take a white RS paint and you just apply drops to it, your first one there that you've got is going to be your 100% black. And then when you mix a little bit of white, you're knocking it down to your 90%, then 80%. 70% and then you're just moving it right up until you've got your 100% white. It's exactly the same if you have a black tube and you take the black tube and you add it to white, you're taking that 100% away and you're knocking it down to 90. And you can see on that grey scale how that moves along to the end to eventually mixing all that up is going to become your natural and you've got like full 
Pac Man yeah. tea here. Yeah. So I want you to do some kind of busting and having a chat about what we actually needed to know before we even ventured into the colouring of white hair. Okay, so we need to have this in our head so that when we see white hair, we can think and go, right, okay, I need this, I need that, I can't do this, can't do that. And then when it comes to the formulae inside of it, it's a breeze after that, okay? So the first one I've got up here is all grey hair is non-pigmented hair. It's not created equal. And I think that's something we need to have a look at because it isn't created equally. We can have fine hair round about the front. And like, let's put our hand up and I know that I've done it and I'm sure everybody else has done it. And if you have me, you're lying. You're definitely lying. But if you have applied a colour and it's been quite a cool or even a blue base colour, and you've not used a different formula around the front area where the hair's slightly finer and it just grabs and you get that blue tinge. Right, is anybody not anybody yeah, ready on that? I'm afraid so. Yeah. Yeah, go for it. Yeah. Right. So what you need to do there is you need to with your non-pigmented hair, you need to add in what is missing. So you need to add in your brown or your blonde. Second one we've got is your grey hair will always go yellow when it's lightened. Now, this I chucked in there because how many clients do you cover their grey but they want some bleached highlights? So you're having to cover over that white anyway. So I've popped this one in because nobody understands this and they wonder why they get yellow on top of white hair. But we've got our melanin that is naturally in our hair and we have the two types. I don't know if anybody knows. Does anybody know the two types? Can anybody tell me? No. Nothing on the chat. So is that the pigments, like your melanin and your... Yeah. So we'll yeah. just go with, we've got our melanin and our fear melanin. Okay. Yeah. So as the hair is lightening, your fear melanin is classed as your red and your yellow. Yeah. And what happens when the hair goes grey, there is still tiny particles of that feel melanin in your hair, but it is naked to the eye. You can't see it. It is so small. So as soon as you hit it with a lightener, you get that reflection of yellow coming through. And I felt it was important because we do do bleached highlights and a tint in between or whatever. But when you're formulating for your toner, you need to understand that there is a reflect of yellow sitting there first before you think about what you're going to put on. All right. So would you double would you double tone then at that point? Would you double tone for would you clear that out and then go for your target shade? You could do. Or you okay. could just formulate to neutralise the okay. type of yellow okay. that you have. Yeah. And then in doing that, then also have the formulation where I don't know, say you have um I'm talking a point three one, which is a gold ash to me. That ash is the second tone, so it's just going to be enough to neutralise that, but it's still going to give me that gold, so it's going to still give you that really nice blonde coming through. So I just thought that was a really important one just to pop in there. Some of these you may find, right, okay, it's a bit daft, but it is really important to know. So one of them is never pop ash on white hair. Right, so again, I've done it. I've done it loads of times until I started to learn how to, um, the, the science and the chemistry and learn how to use colours properly. But if you think about it, if you have white hair, it's at the highest end of grey it can go and then you're adding more on top. So that's like a bunch of grey, a bunch of grey, ends up with humongous amounts of or a colour that just looks like really yuck and drab and, and minging, to be fair. So the second one is the exact same as your grey, but we're talking about cool reds. So if you have a cool red, you need to be replacing your brown because putting a cool red that is going to be a blue base on there is going to give you pink. It's going to give you violets, it's going to give you mauves, it's going to give you 
whatever you did not want to have in the first place. So if you're thinking about white hair and you want that cool red on it, make sure you replace what's not in the hair and make sure that you put some of the um, the missing pigments so you're brown back in here. The fifth one that we have is 75 to 100% white hair. In most cases, we need to ask, add base or golden base. Now, this takes me right the way back. And when do we add base? When do we add golden base? Nowadays, it doesn't really matter, depending on how creative you want to be. If you're just doing Betty feet down the street that gets a wee curly, a wee curly rollers in that, and then you just want a really nice colour for her. If you are using a cooler shade in your tube, I would recommend using a natural, okay? If you're using a warmer tone, if you use a natural, it loses that warmth a little bit. So go for your golden bases and the bit of gold that's in there as your pigment is going to allow for your warmth to be stabilised and still stay there, okay? So the next one after that is, if you want full blanket coverage, go A and below. Anything above an A, and sometimes I've found that even on an A, you're starting to see more of a blend rather than a blanket coverage. Now, when I say a blanket coverage, I mean, th there's no visual yeah. white there at all. Um, so when you see that blanket coverage, perfect. But when you start to see like the little, I call them sparkles, where it's just, you can just see that it's shining through sight slightly. You need to go a little bit lower. The more, when you're looking at a tube of tint, because I can't see this, Sam, can you see my tube of tint here? I can, yes. Right, so when you've got a tube of tint, you have in it your dye load, and then you have your um, ammonia, okay? The lower you go, the more dilodes you have and the less ammonia because the ammonia is not needed to push the hair anywhere at that point. So it's more dilodes, less ammonia. The higher you go, the less your dilodes goes and the more ammonia that you have in there. So the dilodes is your little colour pigments that's trying to get into your cortex and develop. So if you're using anything that's too high, there's not a lot of dilode, which means there's not a lot of the, that to cover your white hair, and that's why we get that shine through. Don't get me wrong, I do it, but I do it because I mean to do it. The other day I did a client and she was practically 95% white and we use 921 and in my colour two is um, violet and one is ash and I just put it straight on 10 volume and it was stunning but I knew we weren't going to get that coverage and she knew we weren't going to get that coverage but that was the kind of effect that we were looking for yeah, yeah so is it like is it like the so the full blanket coverage is a bit like you're not going to see the multi-tones is it, is it kind of more kind of like root to tip is going to be like covered, would you say? Exactly. Yeah. exactly. Blanket, complete coverage. There, yeah. you're not going to get that dimensional tone coming through. Yeah. You're just Whereas going when get... you, yeah. So when you're doing your, um, when you kind of talk about your, your um, sparkles, that's kind of where it's a little bit more kind of less coverage. So you're a bit more natural. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. And sometimes that's nicer, I feel, because you do have that multidimensional colour coming through, whereas yeah. sometimes blanket coverage can be a little bit um, harsh on the regrowth when the regrowth comes through, whereas... You the... definitely get a decot markation line, don't you, when it's that real harsh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, next one that we've got here is, why is it important to master grey hair and grey coverage? Why is it really important that we need to know how you do it? So here I have got all the favours of being able to make money and how I see it is it pays the fucking bills. It's our bread and butter. 
all the big stuff that we do, and I love doing all the big stuff, you know, the stuff that takes me seven, eight hours. I absolutely adore it, and I think it's really creative. But those are the clients that are coming maybe about once a year, yeah. maybe twice a year, if yeah. you're having owners and that put through it. Whereas these clients um, that are coming in to have their grey coverage are loyal, they're regular, they're always going to be there. They're the ones that pay your mortgage. They're the ones that allow you to go on holiday. Do you know what I mean? So we need to get our head around it and take the opportunity and grab it where we can. So I had a look at it and we've got two levels. We were talking about this the last time, Sam, like the, we couldn't even understand what, what we were classed as, the baby boomers and the... Yes. Uh, yeah, but then, then the millenniums and stuff like that. So I had a look at it and the baby boomers was post-war, World War Two, And okay. there was a spike in births at that point so these clients are coming round and um, in the UK there was 13.9 million aged between 55 and 75 these are the clients that we're looking for that um, are, are being like produced to us that want to have um, their, their regrowth done and they want to have their grace covered and then there's Generation X, which is my generation. 14 million UK aged between 41 and 55. So we're coming through as well. And the generation that I see is Botox and healthy and, and yoga and fillers and all that kind of stuff. And nails, they, eyebrows, nails. everything. Yeah. Yeah. They're saving up and going to Turkey to get turkey teeth. Yeah. You know? Oh, it's all happening and this is where, are they going to kick about with their roots or are they going to kick about with their grey coming through? No, because they're going to feel as if that's going to make them feel older, okay? So this is the two generations that we need to be catching with because these are the ones that are going to be regular and they're going to want to come and pay for us to look after them. Do you feel then, so... We were having a conversation, I think, about this before, about age and colour, because obviously kind of since COVID, there has been a little bit of a transition where grey is a little bit more acceptable and you can yeah. go. You know, so we have we, we are seeing some colour houses kind of create colours, especially for those clients. But uh, there definitely is root. There is definitely a, a, a kind of a, an age where, you know, kind of your looks are important. So I, mm -hmm. I do feel there is still that kind of little bit of clientele that you can tap into that want to come every four to six weeks. Yeah. Regardless, yeah. you know. After COVID, I would probably say I had quite a few clients um, that wanted to grow out and go grey. And I only have one that still is. Everybody else was like, eh, not ready for this yet. Not me. Can't do it get my colour yeah. done. Yeah. And one person that has stuck with it has a really funky mullet haircut, shaved at the sides. The way, like, people ask her if she's had her colour done and she's just so bloody lucky because when you look at her hair, it looks as if she's got all these techniques because she's got darker bits just coming through it. It's, like, completely white at the front. It's salt and pepper over the top. It looks as if it's meant to happen, and she's the only client that's lasted. Everybody else couldn't cope with it. They all were like, this makes me look so old. So they all reverted back to their colour again. So I have yeah. none left apart from, as I said, that just one client. One. Yeah. But Definitely opportunities out there then, isn't there, really? Yeah, yeah, one. definitely. But you can still do your techniques and stuff as well. But what we need to be, what I'm not saying, the white coverage is roots only. And you're coming in every four to six weeks. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is if you're doing a balayage on a client and they are a high percentage of white, we need to know how to work that white. Okay, yeah. is it going to be a blend through or are you going to use a permanent colour on it? If you use a permanent colour on it because you're covering that white, you're just making a fucking nightmare for yourself the next time she comes in because how the heck are you getting that out? How are you getting it out? Yeah. You know, so you end up with the work that's coming through. And yeah. so this is what I'm saying. All these techniques, you can do all these techniques, but we need to be able to deal with the white and make it work for us 
All right. So, so let's capture, take the opportunity, make some money. How are we going to do it? The way I see it is know your stuff and science and chemistry absolutely matters. And just reverting back to that last one, if you know exactly what you're doing, the sky is the limit. You can do a beautiful balayage and from the back, the picture's taken and it is a white client and when she turns around she's like 70 who knows who cares do you know what i mean um so it's understanding what the white is all about and how to make it work for us so next so the tactics that i've got here for you okay and i class them as tactics because they are Take thinner sections. Now, how I want you to look upon this is I'm not trying to teach a granny how to suck eggs. And I know you will understand what some of these are, but this can be a problem on um, busy Saturdays when we're running late and we're just taking the massive sections and then we wonder why it's not covered. Or you've got Mrs. Jones and you've only got a quarter of your tube left, so we stretch it out to make it work and then we wonder why it's not covered. So it's yeah. just a little things like that um go through the list if you're finding that you're not getting white coverage on a specific client try one try two of these and just go through the list and the ones that are more extreme at the bottom are my go-to ones i've tried and tested them i understand that they work they may not work this is my opinion they may not work for everybody but i know that um how i apply them they tend to work and there's never been any problem with them. So this one here is taking thinner sections. Again, how I was taught, which was a long, long time ago, is when you're taking your sections and you're bringing it down, you want to have enough tint on that previous section that when you bring that hair down, you can see the tint just slightly coming through. If you can't see the tint, your section's far too thick and you need to go back and reassess it. Um, so tint coming through or reassess. So the next one after that is applying to both sides of the section. Hair is round. We need to be able to cocoon that hair so that um, it's working from both angles. I do see people and they'll lift up the hair and they'll tap it like so, but they don't go back down that way or they go that way, but they don't go that way. And if you're just applying it to one section, it's really not cocooning as much as it should be for full development. Use extra products. As I say, Betty's only got quarter area tube or color that she wants. Um, so I'm just going to bang that on or I'm going to add in more developer. When I add in more developer, it's going to make it stretch a wee bit further. It's just going to cause you a nightmare. Absolutely. We need to have enough product on the hair. Now, I'm not saying that it's to be dripping all the way down, but it needs to be applied. It needs to be thick. It needs to keep that root area or whatever area we're applying. It needs to keep it down. So leave it on longer. That's the biggest one, really. Again, if we're working in the salon and we're really busy, we do tend to go... Right, you know what, I'm just going to take her off. I'm really ready. Mrs. Jones is due in, in five minutes and I can't cope with that because I can't be running late. And then, and then I've got my bus to catch. And then we do maybe slide it up a little bit. Yeah. But what we need to understand is the dye molecules that's in your colour start to activate when you mix it with your developer. And then what happens is you can see it. And we all see it. If we take ages to apply a colour, you can see it like changing in the bowl, right? So you want to get that on where your dye molecules are there and you want to allow as much time as possible for all your dye molecules to develop so that you can get as much colour and as much coverage as possible. After 50 minutes, I would probably say that your dye load is developed and I would probably say that the driving force behind your developer has kind of uh, run its course and it's weakened a wee bit. So after 50 minutes, if you're not getting where you're going, it's off, it's done, it's dusted. Um, if using a demi, switch to a permanent. 
if you're using a demi, you're not going to have the ammonium in there to open up the cuticle and allow your colour to work. So switch to a permanent. If you're using a demi that has ammonium in it, where you're mixing it, I don't know if there's loads out there or not, fair enough, but if you're still not getting the result, we need to move to permanent because permanent's going to be better for us um, and allow us to actually um, coat the hair and get that coverage. Right, use, I don't know if you have heard of this, using double pigmentation. Right, so what you need to do is, this is your colour, this is your developer. Okay, so you need to have double the amount of your developer. No, double the amount, sorry, I went the wrong way there. Double the amount of your colour in your bowl but the same amount of your mixture. So if you were mixing half and half, so say you were doing 30 of your tin and 30 of your developer, you would then go 60 tin, stay 30 developer, because you don't want to up that developer amount. But what you want to do is up the developer strength, because you want the strength of the developer and the oxygen in the developer to be able to allow all those dye loads to work. Right. So, okay, so interesting that you say that then. So we can use yeah. 4% with our colour brand for grey coverage. Yeah. But I tend to find 6% better. Is that why, what you've just explained? It is, because yeah. you've got oxygen and your 6% yeah. do your 4 Yeah. But if you're struggling with the coverage, double your tint, but stay the same with your um, your developer. Okay. So double the same, but up it. Yeah. And um, so I find that works quite well. Have we got any questions or anything so far, Sam? No, all good at the moment. Good. I think they're all is taking notes good? like me. Are we awake or is this boring us now, science, where it's like, it can be quite boring science, but see when you actually get it round and getting it into your head and actually stopping and thinking about your formula rather than just grabbing a tube for the shelf and just whacking it in your bowl, it is satisfying, I can assure you. Yeah, I mean, I definitely, I mean, you know, like, I've I've never realised that your um, when you're lifting white hair, it can show yellow. I've never, yeah. I've, you know, I, now I, I can see where where it's come where, where you're coming from but yeah that's something that i didn't think about you know yeah just kind of assess the whole hair you would assume one would assume that the hair is just obviously got no pigment in it at all because it's coming it's it's appearing white and then obviously when you color the um the hair especially if you're highlighting it it obviously will lift won't it and obviously that's that's, it. that's the reason why isn't it exactly like, even when you're sitting in the sun and you've got white hair um you can see clients, like I've got a client that has snow white hair, it's beautiful, she's got a nice wee graduated bob, it's snow white hair, but every time she needs a new hair dryer, you can totally tell because it burns it and it's got like yellow residue on it as well, so yeah. she's burning her hair and just with that heat. Um, lifting and, up the colour, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, the environment from the heat is allowing that just to let us see those little pigments coming through. But yeah, and definitely the um so the double pigment, that's a good that's a good tip. That is a good one. The other one is one of my favourites as well. It's um pre pigmentation. What were you taught, Sam, when you were um learning if you didn't have the coverage of white hair, what was it? How um neat pro neat neat peroxide. Right. That's exactly the same as how I was taught as well. When you yeah. went in with a little bit of developer. Yeah, yeah. Pre-soften is how we used to... Um, and, and actually, they still teach that to this day on stubble. No. Oh, yeah. Yeah. See, that saddens me so much. Right, I'm going to blow your mind, Sam, right? Because... Yeah. Go on. Developer is acid. Right, so acid, what happens um, on the hair is it makes the cuticles a little bit more tighter, more tightly packed. And your developer mixed with your tint, your ammonia, is what makes that happen. So if you put your developer on 
and not mix it with anything at all, it's doing sweet F-A. It's not doing nothing. So it's why just... do we get taught then that it opens, it's, it's pre-softening the cuticle? That's it, but it's not. It isn't, is it? It's acid because it's closing the cuticle down now because it's um, because it's acid that wants to go to the other end of the pH scale and yeah. it wants to keep it all nicely conditioned. I don't know if you can remember years ago, you probably won't because you're a millennium. <laughs> so you, it wasn't as far, it was as far back as my days, but um, you had acid perums and alkaline perums. Uh, I do remember those. Do you? Right, I okay. do, yes. And the acid perums were the ones yeah. that, if you did two, an alkaline perum and an acid perum, the acid perum was amazing. You could do it on top of bleach because it was acid and it was great for the hair and it was bloody yeah. bloody. Whereas don't use an alkaline because it's going to take you up to the other end of the pH scale, you know? So it, that that's a long time ago and you mixed all your little bottles together. But yeah, developer on white hair, I even got told to heat it with a dryer. I don't know why. Maybe to get that oxygen to... Could be, isn't it? It could be. Possibly. But I think it's bullshit anyway. Right, so here's something that we can do. We, um, and I call it pre-pigmentation, right? So get a high ammonium colour. As we said beforehand, this is a level... I don't know what this is. Nine. Right, so in this, I would probably expect maybe about this from my nail up to the top to be your diode, and then down here to be your ammonia. If you moved it up to a 10, that's your diode, and that's your ammonia. So what you need to do is you need to grab a tube of 10, just base 10. You can either just apply it neat tint with absolutely nothing at all. Definitely no developer. Do not add developer to it. If you find the mixture a bit tough, I take the tint brush and I just do this and then just dab it on. And I always find that quite easy. But you can mix it with a tiny little bit of water if you want to. You can mix it with some water to make it more pliable. And then the ammonia starts to open the cuticle and starts to allow that to work. So if you go away to your colour bar, come back, you've mixed up your product, you start to apply the rest of your head, leave that to the last minute. And then once you're ready to attack that, well attack, is that really uh, the best word? But anyway, once you're ready to apply that area there, wipe it off and just take it away. And at that point, your cuticles have started to open because we need that ammonia that's in there to kick the ass in the cuticles, to get them to move, to get that dialogue done. That's the other one. And I find that one is amazing for me. I even put some perm tissues sometimes there just to kind of keep it nicely packed down. Yes. Yeah. Seen it I before. Yeah. yeah. Because yeah. I just found sometimes that we were talking earlier and you were saying about the pesky little white hairs. Oh, they just and stick up like that, didn't they? Just yeah. proper little tiny ones, oh, especially oh, in the front. Round that front area. Yeah. And also yeah. I find that they, if for staining as well, they're amazing. They stop it from staining. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I find my colours easier to come off if I've used some perm papers to keep that down. I don't yeah. know if that's just me making that up in my head. I, but I, I think that... it doesn't, I don't think it dries out as much. No, it doesn't. So no. where, you know, like when you normally leave it, you get kind of like a dry out, wouldn't you, around the hairline? When yeah. you use the perm papers, obviously it, it's still kind of staying semi-moist. So, yeah. yeah. There you go, semi-moist. So no. the last one is use a darker colour. Sometimes all that hair needs is just more dye load. So if you're working on a base six and you're finding that you're not getting that coverage, just drop it down slightly or go half and half, half five, half six, whatever, just drop it down just that little bit. And that might be enough just to fix it for you. So you need to assess what your um, tactics are. Is it just thin and like you're, you're not taking your sections, um, your sections are too thick, that's what I meant to say. Or are you not applying it on both sides? Is it that it's 40%? Is it 50%? Do we need to maybe even mix up two different formulas? So do we need to mix up a separate formula that's got a little bit of 
golden base for round about the front hairline and then just uh, if we're working with like 30% at the back that we don't need to add any, you know, it's, we need to assess that and not just think that one ball fits all, to be fair. Right, that is it guys. So that is me. I'm going to try and see if I can come out here so that I can actually see somebody. So just, it will just be me and you. It will, you'll be able to see down in the chat box. Yeah. Got uh, you. If there's anyone, yeah. So we had a few people, so that is yeah. good. We had a nice little audience. Excellent. So yeah, just stop your um. If you end, end your screen share, then we'll be able to. Uh, we'll be able to see you. Oh, I think she might have gone as well. I think she's completely disappeared. So I think we are going to be ending in a few seconds because I think she's hit the wrong button. So thank you so much for joining. You have a good